Hi everybody, let's talk digital audio. But first, let's talk analog audio. So we've done the history of analog recording, and I want to remind you that it's available to you here at Capital, so something you should uh, consider using for some of your other projects, and I think you have to use in some other classes. It's a wonderful thing. What are all the advantages of analog, right? So we know it's accurate. We know it's a tried and true tested format. It's archived. The analog processing is is truly wonderful, and most of this, all the plugins try to emulate that. Some are not, but a lot do. We know what it sounds like. We know what to expect. We know that it's different. Not everyone likes that, but we like that. The limitations are actually probably a good thing. It prevents you from going overboard with mo recording 100 tracks just because you can, which with a lot of pop productions, you'll see that. And it just sounds awesome. There are lots of limitations, though, not and this is not even inclusive of everything. So obviously it's fairly expensive to maintain. It can be punch in, punch out gaps, not on the machine we have, it's a two head machine, but on three head machine, rewind time, all sorts of things. My favorite engineer though, insists on using only analog. There's lots of things to think about this consideration. Let's talk digital history. So pulse code modulation, everything that's based on digital audio was invented by Alex Reeves when he worked at ITT. And he proposed that rather than taking a smooth analog signal and changing it to a smooth electrical signal, if you sampled that voltage of that electrical signal at regular times and gave it a binary zero or one, that these samples could be measured and stored with accuracy and on the other end decoded. And that that would be better than the noise and hiss and issues that might be inherent in just pushing electrical signal on a wire. This was years before the gear was even available, right? So this idea of taking smooth analog signal and sampling it at regular intervals is pulse code modulation, PCM. So we'll see that come up at different times. Now, the thing was, it was a theory because the gear didn't exist, but he was awarded for a patent for this in the late 30s, and it just wasn't possible yet with the equipment that was available to accurately do this the way that would make sense. So it was all in theory. Fast forward to the 1950s and the transistor is invented. So the transistor replaces the vacuum tube and the transistor does two things. It's either a switch or an amplifier. And because of the small size of this, the equipment now is available to start putting this into practice. And one of the things that you are used to and you hear of is transistor radios. And this was a huge improvement. So then we get into the 70s and the sound stream is introduced in 1975 with some pretty odd statistics. And it's improved on very rapidly with the sound stream, which is then the four channel, 50 kilohertz sample rate, and it records an orchestra with four channels of digital audio. The question is, did these sound any good? And the idea is no, not by modern standards. And I'm confident any analog recording made comparable at that time would have sounded better. The idea is this is where things really start to get pushed. And it rapidly improves. Late 70s, early 80s, the Sony PCM1 comes out. And if that's not a beautiful piece of craftsmanship, I don't know what is. All right, PCM1, pulse code modulation. And this becomes then the first consumer A to D, D to A converter. And this then is really the dawn of what we think of as the digital age. So up to this point, it had been theory, and now we have this idea that the consumer can buy this. With that, in our two kind of important records that recorded in 1982, both digitally, with very early digital technology, and it's Donald Fagan's The Nightfly and the second album by Christopher Cross. And they're wonderful sounding records. So early digital at this point is still not bad if you have good ears. So I definitely recommend you checking out those early digital records.